another thinker on this topic has been Nick Bostrom. Um, and much of uh, Bostrom's claims have related to AI being an existential risk, um, of course, if it's not well controlled. And uh, Bostrom writes that AI could lead to a superintelligence defined as any intellect that greatly exceeds the cognitive performance of humans in virtually all domains of interest. And he viewed this as a major source of opportunity and existential risk. Do you share the same view? I think it's still hooey. Yeah, I mean, funny, I, I debated with Nick at around the time it came out. And one of the things is, you know, I, you know he's, he's a nice guy. Um, and, you know, I think his replies was, yes, the things you're talking about are all things we should worry about, but we should also have people looking at these existential risks. Well, I don't want to dismiss that idea, but one of the problems we've seen again and again is the people who are saying these things, when you bring them into a policy room and say, well, what's the policy change? What do we need to do different? They don't have anything to say. They say things that sound like, you know, well, I've, I've come to detect these things. But if, if you're in an environment where someone says something that sounds like it's out of chapter one of an Asimov novel, you know, the reason Asimov wrote those things was because he was trying to build a narrative where things were going to go wrong. So, you know, these simplistic ideas, you know, as far as I can tell, Asimov's totally aware of that. You start imposing a simplistic thing. We thought the world was going to be like this, but hey, guess what? It was really complex. And I can only assume that a lot of people took something very different out of those books than I took. I ended up reading them quite late because I didn't read them when I was a kid. The only science fiction I read was Dune, all the Dune series before, you know, around the age of 11 or 12. And, but I did read The Lord of the Flies. And the thing that sticks with me of The Lord of Flies, and also a bit with Kez, I was a bit older when I read Kez, is it's like, oh, why do they have to spoil it by the bird dying and the kids all fighting each other, right? Because as a youngster, I was all into the adventure of it. Oh, kids on an island, you know, they're going to hunt their own pigs uh, or you know, Kez, he's flying this Kestrel and it's all happy and all this sort of thing. Whereas the sort of message of the book was always something a bit darker that you can't do that. Now, with my 11 or 12 year old's eyes, I would tend to remember the adventure bit and ignore the sort of dark context. And I genuinely think what we're dealing with is a generation of people that read these books when they were 11 or 12 and are still fascinated by the, let's all go to an island and leave a bunch of kids there forgetting what sort of happens next. It's the only explanation that makes sense. Now, I don't want to dismiss like the utility of people like that for society. They do extraordinary things. I mean, I've been watching all the SpaceX stuff and the technology is absolutely incredible. But here's the, here's the rub, right? How many of us, if we had a difficulty in our personal life or wanted to reorganize something or worried about something what's happening in our local community, do we think, well, allow me to ask the richest person I know what the solution is? I mean, I think that's almost like the last person you would ask because the richest person you know has kind of spent their life probably, this isn't universally gonna be true, dedicated to other things, worrying about other stuff, right? Which is an important part of society, diversity of intelligence, so on and so forth, but they're probably not the best person to have empathy about your circumstances and we, you know, probably aren't prioritizing, allow me to become a multi-billionaire with some simple idea that I can flock to people, right? And then later on, only when I become a multi-billionaire, suddenly think, oh, well, maybe I should donate some of this money back to solving the real problems of society, like health or social care, or really defense. I mean, defense is a problem of society, but education, you know, that, then they suddenly come back and want to build on those things. We need to support the people who are addressing those problems of society directly now and give those people back their sense of purpose and an understanding in wider society that that's where it's at. It's one of the points I sort of make in the epilogue that, you know, our society is based on those people. It's not based, you know, wonderful though they are, our society isn't maintained in its stability by these extraordinarily clever, but often naive in their intelligence and often unwise, but capable of achieving amazing things through that naivety, right? They are not the sort of people that you want to be running wider society. So we can listen to those ideas and hear them, but you know, 
if you extend those ideas too far, you get back to, this is also, you know, what the statisticians who came up with the notions of eugenics were doing. They were people that didn't have much experience of, they didn't go into mental institutions and care for people. They didn't spend time with uh, people who were poverty stricken or people who'd been uh, sent to jail for debts. They didn't spend time in the streets doing that. They just sat there and thought, well, if only people just ranked intelligence and then we could breed more intelligent people, then society would be better. They didn't have their hands dirty in that social way. And yet they wanted to impose their social ideas on society. And that's where we are right now. And unfortunately, it's occurring at a time when even our own governments have undermined confidence in the public sector and public purpose and have sort of almost argued that the only good thing is to be out there making money. And yet we desperately need those institutions and people and just regular people to be back involved in this debate.